Here we go, back for another Tuesday. This is why I love doing this podcast so much. It's just great fun. I love it. For another episode of the Moor Army podcast, how you all doing out there? I I personally at the moment I'm feeling extremely tired, but hopefully by the time I finish recording this podcast, I'll feel a lot better. But it is Tuesday morning. It is a very cold Tuesday morning. Um, I had a long night of traveling last night. I was in Lima Valley last night. Here in Northern Ireland, which was about a hundred and hundred and sixty mile round trip last night, but I'm here. I've had two cups of coffee, and I'm here to record a podcast as promised. Anyway, yes, hello, welcome back to another episode of the Moor Army Podcast. Before we go any further, actually, I want to say thank you, guys, for all your downloads, streams, and listens to on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music this past week. For the last episode of the podcast, where I talked to you about Dad's unfortunate heart attack, Um, the stats were, I had a look at the stats actually last night, of the Spotify downloads and streams, the Apple Music ones, and also the YouTube channel watches. Um, Guys, thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. Uh, This podcast is growing every week on, especially Apple Music and Spotify. Um... But it's been a fucking hectic week since the last time I spoke. A la- hectic weekend, sorry, since I last spoke to you last week. I just haven't stopped. I've literally been on the go. <sighs> wow, just non-stop. And after saying that I was going to be uh, having things under control again, and I'm getting back to normal again, and everything else. Do you know I've actually recorded a few po- a few vlogs as well for the YouTube channel, and I still haven't put them out because I've been so bloody busy. But on this Tuesday, I am going to get them out. So I am because I, I, I just need to get... And I also promised I'd release the podcast to record it before Dad's heart attack. And I haven't even dropped it yet because I've just been so busy. You know, like last weekend, just constantly on the go. And then last night, I was in Limavati. Tonight, I'm in Belfast. You know, it's just constantly been busy the last few days. And don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying it. It's just I feel like I'm letting you guys, the Moore Army, down and not giving enough content for you. But again, this past few months has just been bedlam. But anyway, I'm here. Stop making excuses, Matthew. Get up and get on, mate. <laughs> but yes, I'm here for another podcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. Hope you had a great weekend this past weekend. I had a very interesting weekend, should we say. Liverpool got fucking beat by Bournemouth, which was just an absolute shambles. With Mo Salah missing a complete shitty penalty after fucking tanking United last week 7-0 to go out and get beat by Bournemouth. I even said to the boys of football on Saturday, what do you see? We'll, we'll be on that roll against United, we'll go to Bournemouth and they'll fucking probably beat us. And they did. But on, 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 on local football, Lewis and I had a great weekend. We beat our, our rivals down the road um, 2-1 with two late goals in the 89th and 91st minute. We'll talk about that in a wee second. What a weekend that's been in football. Um, I had a late night on Saturday night, I had a very interesting Sunday, and then last night I was in fucking Limavati travelling with the under-21 side, which was just a horrendous, horrendous night in Limavati, what a shitty night it was, but the result was good, but the weather was absolutely horrendous, we had torrential rain, we had snow, we had everything you could think of. But before I go any further in the podcast, guys, uh, if you're new to the Moor Army podcast, you know how, probably, well, if you're new to the podcast, I'll tell you how to get in touch with us. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, you know the usual stit, as I like to call it, the housekeeping every week before we continue on in the podcast today. Uh, if you would like to contact the Moor Army podcast or the Moor Army YouTube channel, you can do it by the following methods. First of all, the email for the podcast, first of all, which is moorarmypodcast at yahoo.com. That's Moor Army Podcast at yahoo.com. 
facebook.com also the old trusty social media feeds which still I'm trying to get through all those messages from dad the fucking unbelievable I was actually sitting on the bus last night on my way to Limavati answering a lot of you last night too as well so if I haven't got back to you yet please bear with me I am trying my best to get back to you because there's so many messages about dad it's actually freaking scary just knock my ball of water over there when I'm talking to you lovely um <laughs> you want to contact me on social media which is the mirror army youtube channel facebook page search up that they're on uh, facebook drop a like on the page for me would appreciate it and instagram which a lot of you contact me on instagram daily which is official matthew moore on instagram and for all your merch and more moorarmy.co.uk for all your merch and everything else you can watch all the vlogs on there all the liverpool videos everything we do on youtube's on there and more so it's moorarmy.co.uk well i've got some interesting subjects i want to talk about today there's a whole lot of crap going on over the last week or so uh in the news and stuff and all bits and bobs that have been going on and it's just interesting just to sort of see some of the stuff that's been going on and <laughs> Especially with the like in the world of football and the world of free speech and more. I just want to talk about that in just a wee second. But let's talk about what I was up to at the weekend. First of all, guys, what a weekend. I'm not going to ramble on too much about it. It was a busy, busy weekend for Lewis and I. Um, it was just non-stop. As you all know, the week before, we had a, a, a massive week in football here in Northern Ireland for us. Um, which I'm going to be showing you in the vlog this week. Uh, behind the scenes of the Larn Irish Cup game. Also, I will show you the hotel that we visited this past week. Wow, check out this vlog, it's going to be great. Um, but this past weekend was Derby Day. The Welders took on Dundella, our East Belfast rivals, which we beat them 2-1 with two late goals. They were winning 1-0 up until the 89th minute. And to be honest with you guys, we were pretty shit on Saturday. And I'll the, the boys will admit that to you themselves. They were shit. But fatigue was kicking in. The guys were tired after a busy few weeks with non-stop training and big games. And it was just a whole big pressure. But they grinded out a result. The 89th minute, we got an equaliser. And then on the 91st minute, we fucking went up the field and scored. <laughs> what a fucking goal. What a way to end the derby. 2-1, which was great. It was a great day. So it was. Uh, guys, go and check out Lewis Nye's behind-the-scenes videos of the day. Uh, and also the match highlights and the interview I conducted with the manager on Welders TV on YouTube. Which is, uh, just search Welders TV. You'll find it on YouTube. Guys, what a fucking game. It was unbelievable. I, I, was, I was up in the stand filming the game thinking, oh God, we're going to lose these ones again. Another Derby Day defeat, and then right at the last two or three minutes, bang, bang, two goals, 2-1 two, win. Unbelievable. Even the manager at minute two in his interview with me. I shit we were. <laughs> we went up and won. It was great. Um, but that was a good day. And then on Saturday night, I had a pretty... <laughs> a late one on Saturday night, guys. It wasn't, I didn't even think I wasn't even fucking drinking. I wasn't even drinking alcohol. Um, I was just I had a friend over on Saturday night. And my friend ended up standing here at like 7am, sat up talking shit, watching TV, just hanging out. Great night. Had an absolutely fantastic night. One of the best nights I've had actually in a long time. Just sitting, shooting the breeze and talking nonsense and just having a really good time. And just, wow, it was just a great night, guys. Uh, this past Thursday, it was fun though. As you all know, it's my cheat day and I have a wee beer and stuff like that there and... I was actually quite good this week. I had a few beers and it was in bed at a reasonable hour and I felt good. So I did, so it wasn't too bad. Um, but the weekend was good. I had a late night and Saturday night. I was in bed or I was seven, half seven in the morning I went to bed. And then I got up on Sunday and I was just pattering about and stuff to do for the welders. Obviously the highlight video to put up and stuff and a few hour bits and bobs knocking around and whatever else. So... It was a great weekend, guys. It was good. Saturday night, I really enjoyed Saturday night. It was really, really good. I sort of sat about and just hung out and just talked and no alcohol involved. It was just a great night. It was a, it was a night that I needed. A wee night that I needed just to sit down and talk and just hang out and have fun and have a laugh and a joke and just have a great time. So 
And I can do that actually as Thursday because Brooke and Lewis are off school Thursday and Friday this week because of this St. Patrick's Day weekend thing, whatever it is. And their school's closed Thursday and Friday, which means I can actually, for the first time in a long time, well, no me, I'll probably not have one because my body clock will have me up at like stupid o'clock in the morning. I can actually have a lion for the first time in fucking weeks, months. It's great. But anyway, my weekend wasn't too bad. And then last night, guys, I was away with the under-21 side last night in Limavati. Good God almighty, what a trip that was. Long journey down there. I worked it out. It's about 79, 80 miles from my house to Limavati, which is a long fucking hike. It's just it's just one of those places you go to and it goes on and on and on. Going down was great. The trip was was, was awesome, it was not a bad thing, but coming back, gee whiz almighty, coming over that Glen Shane Pass, which is a mountain area here in Northern Ireland, anybody listening to the podcast outside outside the Northern Ireland area, search Glen, Glen Shane, S-H-A-N-E, G-L-E-N for Glen, Pass, and look at that big trek around the mountain area. We were coming through there last night in heavy snow, the snow was coming down and the wind was really bad, and the bus was rocking back and forward on the way back home in the team bus, but we got through it. And the boys got home. But the one three two last night, it was great to see. Um, I want to give a big shout out to the boys who scored the goals last night. Uh, Eric Akasu, uh, or we call him Rico, that's his nickname, Rico. Uh, fella from the he's Ivory Coast, but he's brought up in Spain. But he's just a he's Ivory Coast type player. He, he's from Ivory Coast, is it? Yeah. What a lovely, lovely guy. Lewis loves him. Lewis fucking loves Rico. We call him. It's his nickname, Rico. Fantastic lad, such great positive vibes around Rico. He's just a lovely, lovely guy. So friendly, always smiling, always appreciative. And he got two goals last night. He went down with the twenty ones last night from the first team, and because you're allowed to have three overage players in your for in your twenty ones team for a game, and he scored twice. And he was so relieved to score last night. So he was. And then also another player we have as well, Muhammad Ari. Um, he or we call him Mo. <laughs> He's our Mo Salah, as <laughs> Lewis calls it. He scored last night too as well. He scored his first goal in the first team a few weeks ago for the Welders. He scored two last night as well. Two unbelievable lads. Work ethics, incredible. Mo's only coming 19. He's such a great kid. He's a lovely, lovely lad. Um, And he's from Morocco. So he is. Mo, lovely fella. Great attitude. So happy to be playing football. And they got a bit of a wake-up call for Northern Ireland football last night with the pitch they were playing on because the weather was absolutely fucking horrendous. So it was it was torrential rain we got down there. I'm surprised the match even went ahead, guys, to be honest. The water was lying on the pitch and the referee let the game go ahead. And that type of pitch last night t- took the legs out of the guys. They were fucking wrecked after they come off that, ma- that pitch last night. And fair play to them. They grinded out a result. They got a 3-2 win. I interviewed the manager. Good friend of mine, Mark, after the game. Mark was really happy with the result. Disappointed they conceded two goals. They were 3-0 up at one point. Disappointed they conceded two goals at the end. But Mark was happy. He was happy with the 3-2 win. Takes him back to the top of the table with three games in hand. So, happy days. They got a big game this weekend. Up against, funny enough, <laughs> our East Belfast rivals, Dundella, on the under-21s level. Now, I'm not going to be at that game because I'm away to... I don't know what you want to call here in Northern Ireland Derry, London Derry. I call it London Derry. Sometimes call it Derry. I don't fucking know. It's 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 still the same place to me in my eyes, to be honest. Um, I'm there on Saturday with the first teams for Witty Institute, so that'll be a fun trip down to the the Ram McBride Brandywell Stadium, home of Derry City Football Club. Great wee stadium. I love that wee place down there. It's quite a tidy wee ground. But yes, guys, got home last night about twelve o'clock, and I was fucking cream crackered, and I went straight to my pit. I was fucked. I was so tired last night, and I was back up this morning, 7.30, getting the kids up for school. As I record this podcast right now, we are looking at 20 minutes to 10. So I'm sitting down here this morning, and I'm a little bit tired, but good old trusty Nescafe coffee will keep me going. Any any chance Nescafe giving me a sponsor for this fucking podcast? (laughs) Uh, As I said, I need a few cups of coffee before the end of the day. And I gotta go to football tonight again because I'm doing up there doing some headshots and stuff and profile shots for the players. Maybe grab some interviews leading up into the game at the weekend. So the joys never stops. Hey ho. <laughs> anyway, that's that was my weekend, guys. Um, very, very, very uh, busy, busy, busy as always. 
But when you work in local football, you wouldn't change it for the world. You love football. I love football. So, and I met a lot of viewers on Saturday again at the football too. Um, people who come up and said hello and said they love the videos and stuff. And people were actually coming up. And I actually really appreciate this. A lot of people were coming up to me and saying that the work that Lewis and I are doing for the welders is actually better than some premiership clubs in this country. And I even got me I seen messages on the people tweeting into the welders' Twitter and all saying they love Lewis and I's social media stuff and our inside match day videos or match highlights or interviews. They love everything. They do with the club. They absolutely fucking love it. So thank you very much to everybody who came up and said that. Said to love our work. They love Lewis's photos and stuff like that. So yes, thank you so much for the kind words. It means a lot and uh, to Lewis and I. Because I was showing Lewis some of the tweets and stuff we were getting. And he was loving it. The welder's Twitter. And he was just like, Dad, is, I really i am thankful for that. And me well, Lewis. Just goes to show you, son, that hard work pays off. So it does. So, but anyway, what have I got to talk about on the podcast today? Jesus Christ, what's been going on in the, in the world this last couple of days? Fuck me! All this crap going around at the minute about fucking Gary Lineker. What is going on? Like, uh, at the moment, I'm not a really big fan of Gary Lineker about the whole because he keeps talking about politics all the time. And like, for example, the very first time the broadcast at the World Cup this past November, he was straight into politics about all this crap going on in Qatar and the world and stuff like it. Gary, seriously, we're watching the World Cup. We're not watching the pl party political broadcast or watching fucking Parliament or Stormont in Northern Ireland. You know what I mean? It's like, what's going on? But a lot of controversy going around at the minute with Gary Lineker about this tweet that he sent out about the whole migrant situation, about, you know, comparing it to the, the, the government, the 1930s, as he, he used the N-word, Nazi Germany. And a whole rigmarole went off. He, he was stepped away from match of the day this past weekend. A lot of his pundit partners, Alan Shearer and Ian Wright and stuff like that, stepped away too as well, saying that they were refusing to do it too. Um, I never watched match of the day on Saturday night, but I saw a couple of clips popping up online saying that they, wrote, they wasn't even commentating for the BBC footage on match of the day on Saturday night. I don't know, I never watched the programme. Um, but Gary Lineker... As of today, for what I was reading this morning, apparently going back after the whole situation being sorted out and whatever, a lot of people have their opinion on it. Uh, people always say that Gary's very woke and he's very, uh, you know, outspoken, and a lot of people are saying like, okay, he's freedom of speech and all that jazz, and he can say his own thing and all that there. But guys, you know my opinion on the BBC. You know what I mean about the whole bullshit, the corruption that goes on in the BBC. You know, and I've spoke about it many times here on the podcast and stuff. And, you know, I've seen people being sacked for jobs because of social media posts. Hell, even here in local football, I've seen boys being suspended for so many games for a social media post. But a lot of people are sitting out there on the on the news or on the, the world of social media and, and the news outlets and all are saying that Gary Lineker should have been sacked for what he said. Obviously, some of the, the, the woke brigade are obviously behind him and saying that they support him and stuff. Me personally, guys, if you're in a high-paid job like he was, you know what I mean, you have to be very careful what you say. You know, and in my opinion at the minute, the BBC is very, 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 you know, diverse and woke and, you know, it's all one-sided with the BBC and that's just my opinion on it. Um, look at all the crap that went through during COVID. All the crap that they spouted out every day, scaremongering people and, and, and uh, we've even talked about the fucking TV licence fee, which was, we're going to talk about later on here in the podcast again because there's no thing popped up about that today um you know they're forcing people to pay a tv license even though half of them don't even need to pay a fucking tv license um people are, they're, they're trying to scare people especially old age pensioners about the tv license and they're trying to force people to pay for a license that some people don't even need a license because of the situation they have and they listen to what's on television the list goes on and on guys you know i i'm not a big massive fan of bbc to be and that's just being totally honest with you um I, I don't think I could ever work for the BBC myself personally because I've known people who, before they worked for the BBC, were genuine, nice people, and as soon as they went to work for the BBC, they become this, like, think they're better than you type person, very woke, very, uh, you know, we're better than you type of thing, and their whole personality just changes. And I don't like that, to be honest with you. At the end of the day, if you work your ass off and get a high, end up in a high-paid job, why change the person who you are for a job? I mean, if I 
was working for a big multinational company, I'd still be me. I wouldn't change. And I've seen a lot of people here in Northern Ireland too, who I've known personally on a personal level, have completely changed and wouldn't speak to you if you, or would even, as I always say, piss on you if you're on fire. And that's, so, that's sad. But this whole Gary Lineker situation at the moment, you know, people are saying that Gary Lineker should be gone and people are saying he should be there. I mean, I was watching the thing about the other day on, on GB News, I think it was, about uh, Matt Letizia was speaking about it. And he was a little bit pissed off because whenever he, he and two other guys get sacked from Sky because of their freedom of speech, because they refused to wear a certain badge and they had their views on COVID and the vaccines and stuff like that. You know, none of their are punditry buddies, the likes of Ian Wright and Alan Shearer and all them boys stuck up for them. But because Gary Lineker does something and speaks up, they all back him up. Which they've got a fair point on, to be quite honest. But again, you know, a lot of stuff Matthew Tessier says, I agree with because I was saying it too at the start. But then I had people come on to my social media uh, during COVID and call me an anti vaxxer and a conspiracy theorist and all this bullshit and all whatever. And, you know, I talked about this in the podcast a few weeks ago that I wouldn't wouldn't get any more COVID jobs and people were, fuck, I had people coming in call me an anti-vaxxer and saying that I should have multiple shots in my arm and I should be having this and that and whatever else and I should be ashamed of myself. Well, and that's your opinion, go and fuck yourself. It's my opinion and I can, I can, it's my body, it's my choice, my life. You don't like it, fucking stroll on. And you know that, guys, I tell the truth here on the podcast. I don't hold any, I mean, we're, up, we're fully on leash now. And I can say as a, well, to a certain degree, of course, like, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's my body, my choice. And if you don't like what I do on my YouTube channel or my, my opinion here on the podcast, then tune out and fuck off. <laughs> Simple as. That's just the way I operate now. I don't care anymore. You don't like it. Tough tits. That's what I say. But no, the whole Gary Lineker situation, you know, at the end of the day, if you're in a high paid job, obviously every job you go into has all rules and regulations, especially about social media now. You know, people have all these different policies about social media and stuff, you know. For example, when I worked in, I think it was Homebase, years ago, um, some of the policies stated about social media posts and stuff like that, about sharing stuff about the company and whatever else, which is fine. You know, I mean, we talked about, talked about this before, where it's even right down to even school level, when you're in a school uniform, if you're out in the street and you're acting like a tit as a young teenager and you're in a school uniform still, Technically, the way they look at it is the way they have the rules now is you're still representing the school because you're in the uniform. So if you're like working for a company, the likes of a, a Screwfix or a Curry's or a B&M Bargains or a Tesco or an Asda and you leave your place of work and you walk out to a car park and act like a tool and pick a fight with someone because you're in your uniform still, the company, you're still representing the company because you're wearing that uniform. So basically what I'm saying is if Gary Lineker is working for the BBC and he's out there saying all this controversial stuff, should the BBC then as a company, I've heard, it was yesterday, the day before, apparently they were, they were reviewing their social media policies because of this situation with Gary Lineker. Me personally, if he was online and he was like, you know, putting the company into disrespect and acting, acting like a tit and, and, you know, things like that, he should be pulled, suspended with investigation. And if it was legitimately to the point where it was extreme, then obviously fired. So my opinion is, should Gary Lineker still be in a job at the BBC? My personal opinion is I think he should have been shown the door. I think he's too political. He's all for, you know, even watching him at the World Cup, but just fucking made my teeth itch. Was he a good footballer back in the day? He was a goal scorer. He played for England in the World Cup. He scored many goals for teams that he played for. Barcelona, Tottenham, Everton. You know, I remember watching him growing up as a kid. But I think he's too politically minded and he's just a bit of a, a, bit of a fucking jackass sometimes, to be quite honest. Now, he's been hosting Matzah Day for a long, 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 long time, as you all know, guys. He has been hosting the Matzah Day. I'm a massive fan of Ian Wright and Alan Shearer. Alan Shearer is actually my favourite footballer of all time, even though I'm a Liverpool man. Um, but even I saw a thing the other day, Ian Wright talked about it on his podcast where he came out and said that if Gary Lineker was sacked, he'd too, he would too walk out. I understand, guys. People have their opinions at the minute about this whole migrant situation and whatnot. You know, and my opinion is, you know, I've recently met a person there from Portugal who has lived in this country six, I think it's six or seven years maybe, 
work from the day the person stepped off the plane. They've paid their taxes. They've worked hard. They work for the health service. So they're working in a high-paid job and a real big high-responsibility job. They didn't come off a boat, didn't get everything fucking handed to them. They've come into the country with their children. And, well, I think one of their children came, one of their kids with came with them, maybe two. Worked hard from the day they stepped off that airplane in Northern, in, in Northern Ireland. They've worked their ass off, never taken days off, always worked hard, paid their taxes, worked extremely hard to earn, earn themselves a good life away from there but then you get these ones that are coming in now guys i'm going to be honest with you here and a lot of you fuckers out there don't like me are probably going to be tweeting me or not tweeting me sorry instagram me and whatever else and email me by the end of this podcast and i couldn't give two fiddlers fuck what you have to say this is my opinion on it the ones that are coming over from different countries who are legitimately wanting to come to this country and work hard and pay their taxes and set up a, a better life for themselves from countries that are in like say war or in slum type situations i have all the respect in the world for that i've never had a problem with that at the end of the day i've got friends who are you know from different countries i have friends from the likes of the philippines spain recently a new friend from portugal you know all these different people that i have i know personally from different countries like for example those guys who i'm talking about earlier on for football the likes of rico who's from ivory coast who works three jobs yeah Pays his taxes, works his ass off, you know, all the earn a living to make a better life for himself. The other way along that as well, Muhammad, who's 18, 19, who also works his ass off. He works in a job hard. He pays his taxes from the moment he walked into the country. I have no issue with that. But it's the fuckers who come to the country who know that the British government is going to hand them free money, free home and everything else paid by the taxpayer, by you and me, who pay our taxes every single week or every single month or whatever it is, walk in and get everything fucking handed to them. When there's genuinely people in this country who are struggling, for example, ex-military, who are living on the streets and who are struggling to even get a roof over their fucking head, or people who have children, like people from the uk who are living in hostels and other situations that are pushed to the side because these fuckers are coming in living in hotels getting three four three four meals a day everything paid for them everything handed to them by us the taxpayer which again guys people will come into those hotels and they will eventually move out and set up a home and work hard and work their jobs and with put back into the economy which i have no issue with but it's the ones who are walking in with three four five six kids get everything fucking handed to them get all the benefits under the sun and get all the big houses and all why people like you and i are out there working 40 50 60 70 80 hours a week and get shit on that pisses me off and that's again that's just my opinion you don't like my opinion that's your choice but you know Gary Lineker had his view on this, and okay, fair enough, he made his opinion and all that there. But again, I think Gary's bringing too much politics into sport. I think it's, there's too much politics in fucking everything nowadays. Everything's political. It's bullshit. Everybody's easily offended, which is bullshit. I, I think a lot of people out there are looking to be offended. They are. They're looking to be offended all the time. You say a certain thing or you post something online. Oh, you offended me. You hurt my feelings. Ah, boo-hoo. Here's a tissue. Go and fucking cry. Grow up in a generation now where, like I grew up in, if you didn't like something, you didn't watch it, you don't look at it, you stay away from it. It's like a TV show. You don't like it, don't watch it. You don't like a radio show or a podcast. Don't fucking listen to it. Sling your hook. Go away. But this is the world we live in now, guys, and everything's all... Like judged and people can't say nothing anymore because it offends people. But in closing, should Gary Lineker have been sacked from the BBC? Because of his, that's because of this recent tweet and because it's just because of the recent stuff that he does. It's all political. He keeps bringing politics into things. Like the start of the World Cup, we all know about the situation in Qatar about people damn building those stadiums and whatever else and all. It's all these different countries you see around the world. I blame their fucking governments for letting the country go so bad. You know, for example, all these different things to do, like send all these, all this money to all these, these, these countries and food and stuff like that. The likes of Africa and stuff like that. All these millions and billions and trillions of pounds to send all the time, and the countries are still 
20, 30, 40 years later, still fucking shit and they're falling apart. No, where's all the money going to? I blame their governments. Personally. Not not the people's fault. It's the government's fault. So, again, in closing, guys, should I think Gary Lineker should have been shown the door? I think he should have been. Whether I'm wrong or not, I don't know. Which, by the way, you can let me know what your opinion of it is. But if you're going to tweet me, if you're going to Instagram me or message me or Facebook me or whatever and say that I'm a fucking this and that and I'm... Oh, I don't even want to get into it, really, to be honest with you. Then keep your opinions to yourself. This is my podcast. I say what I want. And if you don't like it, don't fucking listen. But I think Gary Lineker is a, a complete... He has turned into a complete woke tool who... It's just... I don't know, like 1.3, 1.4 million pound a year he's on. You know what I mean? Does he really need the fucking money? <laughs> I don't think so. I really don't think he does need the money, to be quite honest with you. It's just I was reading an article this, this morning again that he will return to present match of the day. Um, he was taken off last week, but Tim Debbie's come out and done an interview, the guy who's head of the BBC and stuff, and it's an absolute shambles. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Guess who's coming to Northern Ireland? Sleepy Joe Biden. Apparently Sleepy Joe's on his way to Northern Ireland for a visit. So he is. Reading this morning. Says good. For the, uh, he's planned a visit to commemorate the Good Friday Agreement. To mark the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, he said it was in his intention to visit both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So old Sleepy Joe's on his way to Northern Ireland. Wonder if he'll fall down steps or trip over his bike or fall asleep during a speech or he'll bumble his words or he'll be telling us the best way to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement is to get vaccinated. Or like the, he did say about the volcano season and hurricane season, the best way to prepare for hurricane season is to get vaccinated. Joe Biden's a fucking clown. Joe Biden's a joke. Joe Biden is corrupt as anything, and I don't like him. I, I, he's too old for presidency. A lot of people who follow me have said the same thing. That sleep, I call him Sleepy Joe Biden. He should be in a car home. The man is delusional. He's creepy. I, and I know a lot of people who I know personally said he's a creepy bastard, and the way he smells people's hair and the way he is around young people, he's just a creepy old man. But apparently he's coming to Northern Ireland. Should I should I go to one of the locations where he's coming to visit and do a vlog and maybe catch him on my vlog? What do you reckon, guys? Let me know. <laughs> Sleepy Joe is on his way to Northern Ireland. God, I can't wait to see him. He'll probably fall in the, he'll probably fall in the front steps of fucking Stormont. <laughs> Unbelievable. Here, by the way, I have a guess who's back in the news again this week. Harry and Meghan. Oh, no surprise. Whoop de doo. Apparently their their kids, Archie and is it Lib Liberty or Libet, has not been invited to the King's coronation this year. So they're making a tough decision why they come or not themselves. We don't want them there anyway, so what the fuck's the point? I, Every week I, t I, I read through stories and stuff and trying to find stuff to find to talk about on the podcast or I'm just having a wee general browse online when I get 10 minutes with a coffee or whatever and all I keep seeing is these two fucking clowns popping up. Meghan Markle with all her fucking drama and Harry's boo-hooing and whinging and crying so apparently neither two kids have not been invited to their grandfather's coronation of king this year. Oh, oh my goodness me, the world's going to end, the world's going to stop spitting because they're not invited. Seriously? I give up. These two clowns are unbelievable. So they are. Um, but else was in the news. That, oh yes, guys, I saw a, a really disturbing videos pop up on social media over the last couple of days, and it was really, really. It's hard to watch. It was hard to watch. Now you know, at the end of this month, guys, I'm off to a rap a rap concert. Well, she would say a concert. I'm off to a Snoop Dogg concert with Tony. It's actually next weekend. I'm away to it. In Dublin, um, and I was just browsing through. I don't know why it was Instagram or whatever it was, and I came across this thing here about a South African rapper. Uh, is it Costa Titch? He collapsed twice on the stage and then died live on stage. And I saw multiple angles of people videoing it from their mobile phones, etc. And it was really, really fucking disturbing. I mean, just to watch that guy. Like fall off the stage and just wow it was just so 
it was just it was hard to see. Now I'm not a big fan of his music, to be quite honest with you. But it was uh, it was hard to watch. He was on the stage and he was performing for his audience and the audience, and then he he fell over. And people must have thought, nah, he's just tripped over a mic, uh, a cable or something on the stage." And then he got up and then he fell off the stage flat. He had cardiac arrest. And there's someone filmed it from the front row. And you've seen all the staff just literally lifting him and dragging him away backstage. It was fucking hard to watch, like. But unfortunately, he passed away. And it was really, really sad to see because, you know, so young too as well. You know, it just goes to show you guys, there's, uh, there's a lot of investigation now going on to, into uh, what exactly happened to him. But I mean, when I was when I saw, I instantly turned it off, guys. I couldn't watch any more of it. It was just like it was so 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 sad. I mean, he's so young too. I mean, he was only twenty eight years of age, and that just goes to show you, like you know, that life is so precious, and you just never know what's round the corner. You know what I mean? That guy was just performing. He was fit and healthy, performing in front of his his, his fan base, and then the next minute, boom dead now, there's a bit of investigation going on into actually what caused the, the cardiac arrest and stuff um, obviously we'll try and keep an eye on it here and see exactly what's going on with it but it was just so hard to watch and see such a young age too as well which was so so sad but um, it just goes to show you never know you never know the minute when the big man upstairs calls your fucking number it's time to go back on to the more disturbing news uh, you probably all know this fucking dirty sleazy eye fucker Gary Glitter uh, has been sent back to jail he was released from jail and now he's been sent back because apparently he broke uh, the probation the license conditions uh, the probation service have made a statement saying that uh, he served half of his uh, 16 year old jail term um, he was put away obviously for being a dirty old man and sexually abusing three young schoolgirls, which he was uh, found guilty on um, he was put back in jail in 20, I can't believe it was 2015, actually that long ago he was put in jail. Um, but he's now broke his conditions for probation, his license conditions, sorry, for and the probation, and he's now been sent back to jail. Can I make it, can I be honest with you guys? And you may want to cover your fucking ears when I'm saying this. See, people like him, he should never be let out of jail. Pedophiles should be given the death sentence. Anyone who is as sick and twisted as him, the likes of the, the Jimmy Savills of this world, should rot in hell for doing things like that. Anyone who sexually assaults children or women should be fucking hung by the balls. Should never be given a chance to come back into society again because that is just sick to the stomach. And any time I hear stories about that, that just turns me. Anyone, and he's, he, what is this man, Gary Glitter, 78, 79 now? He should be left to rot in jail for the rest of his life because he's just a fucking scumbag. People like that need to be just left to rot and should be just given the death. This is where they should bring back the death penalty for people like that because, and the death penalty is even just too good enough for them. So he, he's away back to jail again. I hope the fuck will keep him there until the day he dies because people like that shouldn't even be in society. Even the people the likes of Rolf Harris as well and Jimmy Savile, obviously, who's no longer here anymore. You know, I even like Rolf Harris. I grew up watching that guy as a kid. His program used to be on in the afternoon where he used to sit and draw pictures and flop them big fucking boards and sing songs. And then you look back at it now when he was accused of being a, a pedophile or a pedophile, whatever you want to call it. And he was found guilty, and then he came out of jail, and he was caught down outside of school, and it makes you fucking sick to your stomach. You just never know what was going on behind the scenes back in those days. Some of the stuff that they got away with was just so, so sickening, especially Jimmy Savile. He's just, oh, don't want to get into that discussion with him, he's just disgusting. But yeah, apparently Gary Geller's been sent back to jail, I hope the fuck he stays there and rots, because people like that just deserve to be, oh, deserve to be... I don't know. Is the death sentence too good for them? Probably. But I just came up this morning on the news. And I'm glad because see people like him, they should be kept off the streets and just taken away. And kept away from young people, especially kids. They're just sick, twisted individuals. 
Right, before I went to some of your emails and questions today, guys, uh, the old TV license is back up in the prey again. Uh, Jacob Rees Mogg has been out blasting the BBC. Um, he's been saying now nah, since the whole Gary Lineker situation, because Gary Lineker apparently got away with it, and his eyes was that the TV license fee should be scrapped. And I agree. I think we shouldn't be paying a TV license for any more at all because I think it's the biggest pile of bullshit. I've been talking about it before. And you guys still to this day email me in or Facebook me or Instagram me your experiences with the TV license people. And I, I to be honest with you, I, I love reading your stories because some of your stories are outstanding. The way you are, you know, people more nowadays stream stuff online and actually watch live TV. For example, Amazon Prime, Netflix, YouTube. Because you already, well, YouTube's obviously free, but the likes of Amazon Prime and Netflix, you pay a subscription for, which you don't need a fucking TV license for because you're not watching live TV unless you're watching live sport on Amazon Prime, which a lot of you people say you don't. You just watch the, the box sets on it and whatnot. And then obviously on Netflix, you watch all your TV shows and movies and whatever else. So, guys, there's rules there for the TV license. We've talked about it so many times here on the podcast. And at the end of the day, if you need to have a license, obviously you, you pay your license if you want to. It's your choice. And if you don't want to pay it, that's your choice. But at the end of the day, I think it's the biggest pile of bullshit. We're paying for millionaires to be billionaires. We're paying for those ones who work for the BBC to be more richer and be more fucking controversial. And I think, well, they're saying a bit, is it next year or the year after the license fee is going to be scrapped immensely? Which I think it's long overdue. People have been sent to fucking jail because of a TV of a TV being sent to jail because you're watching TV. What a load of shit. Seriously, what a load of shit. But because of this whole recent thing with the Gary Lineker situation and then everybody I know I see it, I still see it to this day on social media, people talking about it. About the T V license and about the the how BBC treated people during the pandemic and everything else and they're liars and they're bullshitters and they're too diverse and they're woke and all this nonsense. Guys, it's your choice. If you feel you don't need to pay a TV license, don't fucking pay it. But at the end of the day, I still continue to read your stories all the time, which you send in to me over and over again. I get at least three or four stories a week, which is great to read. And I reply to you and, and, and give you advice and stuff like that. Not that I, I'm the best person to give advice out, like, but I just write back to you what I would do personally if it was me in your situation but at the end of the day you know it's it's up to yourself what you do but if you feel that you don't need a license and to come to your door tell them to fuck off literally tell them where to go because at the end of the day it's your choice you know what i mean i've seen people like online videos and stuff like that they're of don't need a TV license and they're chasing them away from the door and they're like, oh, you should, we could go to prison for this, the thousand pound fine. Aye. Who's the thousand pound pound going to? I've seen people chasing people away from doors on videos on the likes of TikTok and YouTube shorts and you know, just chasing people away saying, I'm not paying for fucking Jimmy Savile lovers. I'm not paying for COVID fucking bullshitters. I'm not paying for this and I'm not paying. Well, and that's your choice. But this crusade, now I've seen a few things online, people are, are petitioning now to get this license scrapped, which it should be. It's a tax for watching TV, which is bullshit. But anyway, that that's just my opinion on it all, guys. And to be quite honest with you, you know, it's up to yourself. But again, the rules are the rules. And if you go onto their, their website and check out and you meet their criteria for not having the license fee, then don't pay it. But it's entirely up to yourself what you want to do. So it is your choice. So it is. But I do appreciate obviously all your, um, you know, all your all your stories and stuff you send me on a regular basis. Right. I'm going to get in here to some of your questions and stuff like that there, and some of your messages that you've been sending me over the last couple of days. Jack asked the week guy, but by the way, this week comes back on Thursday, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm also going to get that Jack asked the week T-shirt released this week. Um, and some of you are still sending me in names for the, the name of the donkey. So I need to get, I mean, get a couple more names coming in this week. And I'll maybe pick it this week or next week. I'll pick the name of the donkey for the jackass of the week. I'll go to Facebook here first of all. Um, Karen Gilmartin says, uh, Hi Matthew, is the podcast on bullying coming out? 
the one you did before your dad was sick. I'm glad he's on the men sending love and cuddles to you and your family. Karen, yeah, I'm going to drop that event. I want to get that out this week because that was a really good podcast that I've recorded before dad gets sick. Uh, Connor wants to know um, what's the situation with Flyby? Flyby? I have no idea, Connor, to be honest. Um, is Flyby still going around? I don't know. I think they're coming back again, as far as I know. Uh, let's have a look here and see. Actually, because there's a link here on the Flyby website or Flyby.com. It says here on the 20th of January 2023, the High Court reported David Pike uh, Joint Administrations for Flyby. The Flyby is now uh, all fly- sorry, it's now seized trading flights. Hmm. Don't know. Doesn't look like they're coming back anytime soon, Connor, to be honest with you. Um, Karen also asked me as well to have any sympathy for my United fans after last week. No, I don't. <laughs> but after what happened at the fucking weekend against Bournemouth, I've heard a lot of United fans laughing at me and stuff and saying, here, Matty, fuck, your, your success didn't last very long, did it? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, we just have a look here and see. Now, going to the, the messenger of the... Uh, the Facebook fan page here we see. Do, 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 do. I've got a wee cracker one here from Kieran Lavery. He says, uh, in your video you were, you were saying United were shit. That was our 7 0 reaction video. Um come back when the United go up Liverpool go above United on the table. I still love your vlogs. Big man, keep up the good work. Cheers, Kieran, appreciate that. That's quite funny actually. <laughs> Oh dear, one here from, let's have a look here, from Dean. Says, hi Matty, how's it going? Uh, when's the vlogs going to start coming back on a regular basis again? Been missing the vlogs over the last couple of months because you're due, due to you being so busy with work, etc. I know you are currently on YouTube so many years now. What's I forgot to do a video the other fucking day for, by the way, guys. Jesus Christ, I forgot all about that. Good thing I read that message, actually. We're on YouTube. I tell you now, actually. I think it's this week. We're on YouTube set eight years now. Jesus Christ, that's wild. Uh, yeah, I, I have to record a video for that, actually. It's just, it's mental. So what is this? Have a look here and see. Sort by, hopefully more of you. I don't want to fuck out a look at it later on. But yeah, um, the vlogs are coming back this week. Because obviously I have more time this week to put more vlogs out. Just been absolutely hectic, as you know. It's just crazy. So it is, but yeah, it's madness. But anyway, yes, um, thanks for your messages on Facebook. Let's get into the old uh, Instagram, Rooney. I love old Instagram because you guys contact me on Instagram regularly, which I absolutely love. Uh, let's have a look here and see. Right, one here from Sinead. Sinead wants to know, hi, Matthew. I noticed you're coming to Dublin. Yes, I am. Uh, at the end of the month. Which concert are you going to? I'm going to two concerts in the three arena this month. I was wondering if you were going to be at the same concert that we're at. Me and my partner. If you are, let us know. Keep up the great work. Love the podcast. Hope to run into you sometime soon. Okay. We're actually going to the Snoop Dogg concert at the end of the month. Twenty. What is it? 26th of this month at the three arena. Even though he's in Belfast the night before. Fuck me, I wish the hell I went to the Belfast show instead. I'm only kidding. Uh, Tony wanted to go to Dublin, obviously, for a wee bit of a trip and stuff. But yes, we're going to the 3 Arena in Dublin. So if you're at the Snoop Dogg concert, guys, or you're in Dublin on the 26th of March, Tony and I will be in Dublin for the day. So we will be. So if you want to come up and say hello and get a photo and say hi and chat and whatever else, and it'd be lovely to meet all of you for the first time because I do get quite a lot of listeners from Dublin. So, um... It's great to hear, obviously, from our, my friends down in Southern Ireland. It's great to hear from you all the time. I love getting all your emails and stuff and telling me different stories and whatnot. So, yeah, I'll be there on the 26th of this month. So, I don't even know what, what concert you're going to. You never said in your message here. So, um, But it'd be nice to get back into the three. When was the last time I was in the three arena? Fuck, I can't even remember. Three arena? I was in the three arena about 15 years ago, maybe more. For a wrestling show, TNA. Fuck, that was a long time ago. Or was it uh, in and after that as well? I can't even remember. I think that was it, actually. Mm-hmm. It's the only time I've ever been to the three arena. It was for T- That was a long time ago. Fuck, that was a long... T- no, I would say probably about 2008, maybe. Roughly. But, uh, yes, if you're about and you're at that show as well, give us a shout. 
here I was looking at some of them. I actually rang Tony yesterday to say to him that Snoop Dogg was doing a meet and greet thing for all the shows. Eleven hundred pounds, one thousand one hundred odd pounds to meet Snoop Dogg. You're going to take one picture with him, and that's it. Like what the fuck? You think for that type of money you get a few things signed? You know you'd be talking to him. You know, spending maybe five or so minutes with him just to have a wee chat with him and ask him a question, whatever. Hell no! Like what the fuck? You think if he does like thirty or forty of them, or maybe more at a gig. Look at the amount of money that guy's making off that gig. On fucking real. I said to Tony, and Tony was like, oh, was he doing meeting great? And I told him once it was, and he went, nah, you're all right, bro. <laughs> I am fucking paying that money. Even though I was a millionaire, I still wouldn't pay it. Well, different. Well, if I was a millionaire, maybe like, but fucking hell. Like, I thought, give me 1,200 pounds to meet Snoop Dogg for like a minute. Quick picture. All right, bro, what's happening? Bang, out the door and away. Really? Unbelievable. Anyway, let's get on to another one here. Here's one from Kevin. Kevin says, Hey Matthew, how you doing? Hope you're keeping well. I ran into you a few years ago in Belfast, around about 2017 or 2018. You were very, very nice to me that day. You and Brooke and Lewis were having a good time on the day out. I approached you at Victoria Square in Belfast. You were so nice. I asked you for a selfie and you were kindly obliged. You were so nice to my girlfriend at the time and I, and I just wanted to say hello to you. Love all your videos. Watch them regularly. Never miss a video. Never miss, miss a podcast. Keep up the good work. And I look forward to running into you sometime soon. Kevin from Balamina. Balamina, hey. Yes, I have some good friends down Balamina, hey. So, Kevin, not a problem. It was not, I'm trying to remember even, fuck, that was about five years ago. Gee whiz. Uh, yeah, that was quite a long time ago. <laughs> so it was. Um, but yeah, no problem at all, guys. I'm always the same with people. You want to come and get a picture and say hello or talk or say hi or whatever? I'm always up for talking. So, you know, excuse me. Um, I was going to say, no, but yes, Kevin, it was obviously nice meeting you that day. Um, I'm trying to actually remember. Do you remember actually meet that day at all? Do I actually remember that day? Flip. That's a long time ago, like, but uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just here sitting recording the podcast here. I'm actually trying to uh, get the original date of. Ah, there we go. 22nd of March, 2016. is when we first went on YouTube. And today we're currently sitting here on the 14th. So we're not actually at the anniversary just yet. So it'll be next week. But we'll have to get a special video recorded and do some flashbacks with the kids. Because we've been on YouTube since 2016, guys. That'll be seven years on YouTube. That is fucking insane. I can't believe we're on YouTube seven years. It's unbelievable. Time just flew by so quick. We're actually living in this home, our home, eight years yesterday. Eight years we've lived here. So we did. I remember we moved in here, the, the people who we uh, got the house through, done a big launch thing for all the new build houses here at the time, and we have photographs of myself and the Lord Merv Banger at the time, standing in my kitchen, out the front of the house with Lewis and I, doing a photo shoot for the company who built these houses. And Lewis is only a wee tote. Like that was 2015. Mm. It's a while ago. <laughs> I, remember day, I remember that day like it was yesterday. I remember the first time I broke the news. My broken Lewis were living here. Couldn't believe it. That's a story for another day. So it is. But yes, Kevin, thanks for your question. Nice to meet you at time. All the way from Balamina. Hey, good old Balamina. Some good people down in Balamina, I tell you. There is there some good people down in Balamina? So there is. There you are. Right, one more before I continue on. Let's have a look here on Instagram. Okay, there's one here from Teresa. Says, hi Matthew, just wanted to ask you a quick question about food. Okay, fair enough. Just wanted to know, what is your all-time favourite food as a child? Favourite food as a teenager? And current favourite food today. Okay, it's a bit of an interesting one from Teresa. Uh, right, favourite food as a kid? God. Hmm. Funny enough, you, you, you say this. I was actually talking to Lewis the other day. 
because I was out with dad, uh, I wasn't out with dad, so I was out doing a bit of shopping the other day, and I was buying like yogurts and stuff like that, and for the kids and fruit and everything else. And I remember a Pacific yogurt. That, now, I, I'm not a yogurt eater, guys, to be honest, but they used to have, a, a, it was like a yogurt, but it was like a jelly yogurt back in the 90s. I used to eat, it used to be called Wobblers. I don't even know laugh when you hear that name, Wobblers. And I used to love that. I used to eat that religiously. I, I like to eat, eat the me chocolate mousse things you get from the supermarket too, but I remember that back in the day. It was quite good. Um, used to love that as a kid growing up. Teenage food, God. But whenever you're a teenager, you eat a lot of shit. When you're a teenager, don't you think you eat? Oh. I'm trying to think. Teenage food, probably the likes of a, a KFC or a good hamburger was good back in the day. Favorite food now would be probably a good steak. Uh, I like a, a really good steak. I'm actually making steaks tonight, actually, for my dinner. Um. Before I go off to football tonight, um, or maybe can just leave it to the morning. Actually, good rump steak. I do now. The, the restaurant, our favorite restaurant, you've saw on the vlog many a times, does these thing called porky fries, which is just fucking unbelievable. You said it in the vlog your week. It was Dad's birthday dinner. Um. Oh my god, they do it like pulled pork with fries and this this cheese, this sauce to use, and barbecue sauce too. It's unbelievable. I love that too, but I love a good steak, and obviously a good bit of chicken too as well, so, but yeah, steak would definitely be for me, so it would be at the minute, but teenage food, I don't know, because when, when I was a teenager, I was always working, I, I don't really recall my bright many meals, because <laughs> since I left school at 16, I've always been like busy, 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 so I have, but. I would say a good hamburger back in the day, or a KFC, or something like that, but nowadays I love a good steak, so I do really love a good steak, big time, just love a good steak, with uh, peppered sauce, chunky chips, veg, and then obviously uh, maybe a, a pint of beer with it, or a big glass of, a big pint of ice top water with ice. I love that there. But a good steak's good, so it is. Right, I'm going to go. Well, thanks for your question. I do appreciate it. It's a bit of a strange one, but it's a good one. Right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the podcast for today. Uh, thank you for taking your time to listen to the podcast, as always. Come up on the on the podcast on Thursday. I've got more questions that I'm going to answer from you guys. Uh, I'm going to be talking more um, about, obviously, I may even just do a wee flashback, talk about our time on YouTube and stuff like that, and talk about a couple of our subjects that's floating around in the news. And more Jackass of the Week's coming back this week. So if you have any suggestions who you think Jackass of the Week's at this week, which you'll all probably think after today's podcast, who you'll probably think it'll probably be, uh, and more. So stay tuned for the podcast coming up this coming Thursday. I will be making an announcement on social media this week in relation to us moving to TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and other platforms like SoundCloud as well for the podcast. So stay tuned to Instagram, Facebook, and more. We're going to try and get more sources this week sorted, get the ball rolling and get everything organised this week. I'm going to be releasing more merch this week as well, hopefully too as well. Um, the Jackass of the Week t-shirt, I want to get. I actually want to get one of them and wear it about so I get people to see it. <laughs> I love the Jackass of the Week. I've also got any names at all for the Jackass of the Week, don't forget to get them in the way. So I'll, I'll probably pick the name for the donkey either this week or next week so keep coming in with the names for the jackass of the week and by the way before i do go guys dad is doing great he's doing fine i know i haven't mentioned him on the podcast yet a lot of you are asking every day how he's doing dad's doing great he's getting on his feet again he's not he's doing well and he appreciates all your love and support like i do dad's doing good and he's obviously had his warning from his wee heart attack that he had two weeks ago or three weeks ago really and he's doing good he is doing really really good he's on the mend and he's just being typical dad so he is so thanks guys for all your support i do appreciate it right guys i'm gonna go now so enjoy the rest of your tu or tuesday enjoy your wednesday and i'll see you back here on thursday for another episode of the Murami podcast i'm off here now to get some vlogs put together i got work to do as well and also head to football tonight so that should be fun the joys right guys until thursday hope you all uh, enjoy yourselves whatever you are doing stay safe and until thursday i'll see you back here for another episode of the Moor army podcast till then guys see you all soon 
Thanks for listening.